This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. Before we get started, I would just like to note that whoever decided to pick this time to start working out in front of my house needs to be slapped. So if you yeah. hear heavy machinery in the background, that's why I, I, I am... My, my dad is a city commissioner. I can ask him, and then he can direct me who needs to be slapped. <laughs> <laughs> I say this, but honestly, they just don't have any idea. And, uh, of course, I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. Uh, my co-hosts are Holly Christine and Gonzo Link. Hello. Hey there. And if you look at the title of this show... Oh, oh. what's coming? Yeah. It, it's, it's been needing to come... This was unavoidable. Yeah. I mean, I, I was really kind of hoping that this would die down and we could just not talk about it because for a while there, I was like, what the fuck even is Gamergate? Like, how did this start? Why is this even a thing? Please, can we just let this go away? But no, it's still a thing six weeks later. Yeah. Has it, has it been six weeks? It's been something like that. I think it started like late August or some shit. Yeah, I mean, somebody, it's been go somebody dropped the number two months in uh, yesterday, so I wow. would say six weeks God. is probably a fair estimate on, on the wow. you know, because people tend to just round things up. Indeed, just, yeah. just wow, six weeks, and 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 I know when it first initially went down, I heard the name Zoe Quinn. It's like, okay, what does she do? You know, she supposedly did things and stuff, which we will we will delve into that and we will sift through that in just a moment. But, yeah, that's uh, a whole hornet's nest into itself. I mean, yeah. Just because just, there there is an argument to be made about transparency, I don't <laughs> fucking care because what's happened <laughs> with this has gone way beyond just trying to get people to be transparent. So. Yeah, definitely. And it all started. It all started. And, and, and I brought up the name Zoe Quinn. It all started when, pretty much, to put it as simply and as abrasively as I could possibly put it, because that's how I understand it. This all got started because her ex-boyfriend was upset that he couldn't tap that ass anymore. That's how I understand it. So he went and he made all of these claims that, oh yeah, she was sleeping with, with these game developers or whatever. Or not developers. She is a developer. Yeah. She was sleeping mm -hmm. with the journalists to get good reviews, even though it's been proven that that particular review in question hasn't popped up. And, and, of course, there's also the stuff going around of how she was possibly cheating on said boyfriend or what have you. But I, I think – I just think at the end, butthurt boyfriend is butthurt, and, you know, and he's doing this in exactly the wrong way. That's how it all got started. And then eventually balled into some people coming on and latching on, okay, we need more transparency in journalism, which, good goal, except you got the fuckwits that have taken over – you know the goddamn label, and are using that to harass and threaten, and otherwise scare women out of the industry and out of their homes. And a friend of mine who is a, a female developer mm -hmm. um, posted today that she's going to be off social media for a while because she just can't deal with it. Yeah, she's like, just <laughs> let me know when things, you know, go back to normal. Yeah, it's like yeah. when things get better. Yeah, to these people, I want to ask, what the fuck? I mean, seriously, are you that threatened by a woman? And, and a good example, Anita Sarkeesian. You know, oh, all, God, yeah. Always comes back to her. Always seems to when, when these, these uh, gamer issues come up. And just recently, she was going to be – I think she was going to be making a presentation. I want to say University of Utah or – Utah, yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, somewhere in Utah. Yeah, definitely in Utah. And people were like, yeah, we're going to – some some jackass was like, yeah, I'm going to like – if she speaks, I'm going to like shoot it all up Columbine style and shit. And it's like, you motherfucker. You motherfucker. So, of course, you know, in the interest of safety, she called it off, you know, because – Well, in the interest of safety, what she did initially was she said like, guys, can you maybe possibly do a, you know, a greater screening, you know, screen people for weapons and – then they were just like, well, we have open carry, so... Uh... <laughs> yeah, we can screen people, but we can't <laughs> tell them that they can't come in. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's... Oh, God. 
Yeah, and just... an open carry. This is – oh my god, this is what Republicans want all over the place. They want this whole open carry thing. Yeah, this this right here, if, if you are a member of the GOP, and by that I mean like a fucking politician listening to this, and you know, I want you to take a good hard look at this. This is the kind of shit that could happen with open carry. I also want to note that one story in the last episode of Thesmia Talk where somebody did – was was – you know, in an open carry area, and, well, he was openly carrying a gun, and he got held up by another guy with a gun and got his gun stolen. Yeah. So, fuck open carry. That's a whole different story, though. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So she's, and I, and I know she's been scared out of her home at least once. I know, I believe Zoe Quinn has as well. Oh, yeah. And also, <laughs> one other person, uh, what is her name? Brianna. Bri- Brianna Wu. Yeah. Brianna Wu. Thank Brianna you. Wu. Thank you. She she again is another one that's been scared out of her home. Why? Because people are sending death threats to these women who dare speak out against any kind of the quote unquote norm that gamers have enjoyed for yeah. You know, let me just, let me just say one thing. I mean, death threats are one thing. They're they're not cool. No. Death threats are not fucking cool by any stretch of the imagination. Right. They're one thing. Dropping somebody's docs and information, that's an entirely different thing. That's legitimately putting this pe- putting these people in the line of fire, saying, like, here's their information. Go do whatever you want with it, people. Yeah, yeah. which is definitely beyond us. Oh, God. Those, the, the people who are doxing them, I don't care what side you're on. If you're doxing somebody like that and, and, and you're making them a target for something like this, you need to be kicked in the genitals. By that a horse. Said- in, in the United States, it is incredibly, incredibly easy to get a hold of somebody's um, contact information just by going on various websites. Um, oh, yeah. White Pages and uh, Spokeo. And it, it, it's basically like if you've ever paid a bill in your life, somebody will have sold your address and phone number to one of these companies. Oh, yeah. So, um, and I'm going to... I'll. Uh, give Gomer the links to post up with this um, podcast. Yes. Um, but there are ways to remove yourself from there. And to everybody listening, I suggest that you do so. Yes. Uh, because, mm-hmm. it, you know, just recently I had to go through and remove several years worth of addresses. Um, thankfully, I don't think my phone number showed up anywhere. Yeah. Um, but my address for, you know, going back, Several, several years, all the way until when I was in college. Wow. was on the internet. And um, I had to pull all of that because I've been dealing with my own stalker. Yeah. And um, I only found out that it was out there because um, Lindsay Ellis, the nostalgia chick, who was also being targeted by this same stalker, um, found out that her information was out there. Yeah, that, that is the thing. That is the thing. And then, of course... After that point, if you're doxxed, then you know somebody's got some hacking right. going on right. somewhere. It is just, oh, lordy. But yes, those links will be below. And all the links, I, I normally with this show, I, I need to get better about putting the links that we end up using or pulling from in this show. Uh, I actually have a separate file from the nor- from like our general links file. And all of the stuff that's going to be talked about, well, that's going to be used. They're going to be actually put, you know, in, along with the entry as well. At, at the very least, on my site, it'll probably be on the Nerdvice version as well, depending on how big it makes the entry go. Because, <laughs> mm-hmm. but, but it, the, but they will be there, so you can look at them for yourself. And if any one of us, you know, is inaccurate or whatever, then you know you can look at those and, you know, you know, basically, open discussion. If we're wrong about something, show it to us, prove it. <laughs> That's basically what I'm saying. Oh. Yeah, I mean, we, we're not the smartest people in the world, despite what y'all might think. Yeah. So if... if we, or our moms if, if, might think. Exactly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but if, yeah, if, if, seriously, if, if we say something that's, you know, demonstrably false and not true, I mean, feel free to call us out. I mean, we, we want to give you guys accurate information. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's like, uh, I know... I haven't shared much about Gamergate on the social media because I, I have been building up for this show. And a, a couple of things that I have shared, uh, and I know I've been called out by like by Lord Cat on it a couple of times. You know what? I welcome that. I really do. Because <laughs> it's like that means, hey, there is some information I may not have known. 
and this mm-hmm. information may or may not check out. If it checks out, great. Then I will switch up and I will move on. You know, yeah, that's... there's a lot of things about this whole situation that have like kind of, I mean, like just in doing my own independent research, kind of gave me pause to think like, okay. Honestly, like, the more sane people that have attached themselves to this movement, Mm -hmm. they might have points. They might be on to something here and there. They might have certain things going for them that are true. But at this point, at this point, I really don't care if you are in the right when it comes to being on, you know, a certain issue with Gamergate, because the whole movement at this point, for me, just in my eyes has been hijacked by far too many radicals that I can't I cannot take this movement seriously especially considering that it is now being used by the mainstream media to paint all gamers in a bad light that's yeah. fucked yeah let's and, see. It, was, it was what 7 years ago I was ranting about fucking Jack Thompson I don't want to have to go back to doing that again and by the way let me just say did Jack Thompson ever get the level of hate and vitriol that people like Zoe Quinn or Brianna Wu or Anita Sarkeesian are getting. Did they? Did he ever get bomb threats or, or death threats or have his docs dropped? You know what? I don't think he did. I well, honestly don't think he did because, well, for one, maybe, he was, well, admittedly a disbarred lawyer, but he knew enough of the legal system to where if you did that, he could do something about it. The other hand... He also lived in the time before Twitter, so... This is true. Right. Well, well, Twitter kind of... Was sort of coming up at that point, or at least the point where I got into everything, which was about the, 2007. But, well, before the, the the time of hashtag activism, anyway. There we go. That that works a little better. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but in the interest of giving you guys a more accurate, you know, a more accurate representation, I did find a news article on the Washington Post, which, as of this recording, was posted two days ago. And that actually talks about Gamergate, and it's called The Only Guide to Gamergate You Will Ever Need to Read. And they, they talk about some of the stuff behind it. They, they have like, well, what is it or what have you, uh, which we will get into that. I'm actually jumping down to where they talk about how did it actually start, because I think start from the beginning. That should do it. And we'll see how accurate my, 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 my view of how it actually started is. <laughs> yeah. So – so this so it reads here, this all kicked off on a very specific, if no less troubling, issue. Uh, in 2013, an independent game designer named Zoe Quinn released a free game called Depression Quest. Depression Quest isn't a quote-unquote game in the way we t- traditionally conceive of it. It's more of a story or piece of interactive art, which, as it unfolds, tell the story, tells the story of a young adult's depression. By the way, I have played it. I did do a, a Let's Play of it. It's not bad. Uh, By the way, just in case you're wondering, that type of game is called a visual novel. Yes, that is a visual novel. Mm. Uh, and 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 anybody who says a visual novel is not a game, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't even give out a hearty fuck you to that because it's like I know some good friends of mine who would agree with that viewpoint, and uh, I, I I don't want to <laughs> start too much shit. <laughs> There's gonna be enough. I mean, I'm I'm probably one of us is probably. Well, three of us will probably be trolled at over this, but you know what I say, bring it on. I can handle it, you know, but, you know, hey. But, hey, that means people are listening, so, you know, hey. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, some people were really into Depression Quest, including several video game critics. Other players took issue with what they considered the artsiness, the non-gaminess of the game. Remember, this whole debate essentially boils down to identity. What counts as gaming and what doesn't. In either case, the stage was already set for some kind of major meltdown when, in mid-August, one of Quinn's ex-boyfriends claimed, in a series of disturbingly intimate and very long blog posts, that she had cheated on him with several men in the gaming industry, ostensibly to get ahead in her career. So, cheating was involved. Supposedly. Supposedly, yeah, but, again, like, God, there, there is a discussion to be had about whether or not, it's like, okay, did... Did she, you know, cheat on her boyfriend with a gaming journalist to get a good review? That's a pretty... That's... that's if, she, if she did, if she did, then that that's not cool. Because, you know, just as someone who went to journalism school, journalists, I find, should really detach themselves from the content creators and should just objectively view a game on its... You know, based on face value. Right. But I, I just... You know... I, I, 
none of what what's happened to this woman since is in any way justified by this. If she did that, right? Nobody deserves death threats. Nobody deserves rape threats. Nobody deserves bomb threats and having their docks dropped. Yeah. I mean, if somebody does something fucked up, then they should, yeah, be called to task for it, and you know, put through due process of whatever. But vigilante justice is not warranted in a case like this. No, and it doesn't matter what the circumstances around it happens to be. There are plenty of people out there. In fact, there's probably somebody out there right now, as we are recording this, as you guys are listening to this, probably cheating on somebody else. What's going to happen? There's going to be a fight. One of them's going to end up leaving the other, or they're going to make up. There's not going to be any threats, no threats of rape, no threats of death, no threats of you know blowing them up into a million pieces. It's just, you know, they talk it out. It, it, I, think, I think the worst it would get under normal circumstances would be, you know, domestic abuse, which, horrible, but that's the worst I imagine it would get, normally. Yeah. So, so what but, makes this, what makes her, what makes Zoe Quinn, assuming, you know, because this, this, it's all a big if, if she did, why would this warrant, you know, the death threats? It doesn't. Well, more importantly, why does it come back to her? Exactly. And it, yeah. This is a huge problem that we have with society that, you know, it, only only the person who is actually doing the cheating is at fault. Yeah. And that's, that's just not true. This is true. It <laughs> does take two to tango. Right. And more importantly, as Gonzo was saying, you know, this guy's a journalist. Mm-hmm. He presumably went to school he studied this this is his profession so he should know better than you know if this actually yeah. happened to become intimately involved you know people are like well corruption's always going to happen yeah that's that's yeah. probably true it's unfortunate and it's probably true um and if people are going to act in corrupt ways to get ahead then the people who you know, are also involved in that, the journalists and whatnot, need to be the ones who are saying, no, you know, I really shouldn't talk about your game if we're going to be involved. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, and, like, seriously, though, um, one, one thing that, I, that this whole deal really made me think of when it comes to, like, you know, game journalists selling out or, you know, taking favors or bribes or whatever for positive reviews... Look at what happened, like, with Jeff Keighley when he, you know, when they took a picture of him staring soullessly into the camera surrounded by Mountain Dew and Doritos. Did he get death threats? Did he, you know, have to leave his home? Nope. I'm, no, it was just became a joke. It was just like, oh, Jeff Keighley, he's such a sellout, lol, lol, lol. But, but then again, some, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to try and, and, and see if, if, if any of these guys would think this way. Oh, this is going to hurt but what they might see it is, well, he didn't do it for sex. He didn't use sex to do it. Or, or shut the fuck up. He was getting much. money from corporations. Exactly. Like he was getting money from giant ass corporations to say like, hey, buy this product because they gave me money and took my soul when they did it. There you go. And it's just, I'm... It, it it leads back. It, you know, it, it's leading back to to well. Oh God! I, my my not thoughts saying, are <laughs> not saying that he is any worse, better, or whatever than Zoe Quinn and you know this whoever the journalist was that she allegedly you know had an affair with or what the fuck ever. It's just why are you calling her to task? Yeah, an independent developer, somebody who released a fucking free game online, when you have Jeff Keighley, a man who is nationally visible. Like, who has media coverage, you know, about, er- not everything he does, obviously, but, you know, he's on mainstream TV, he has corporate sponsors, and it's just like, is it... <sighs> why not take him to task? He's a much more visible figure in the gaming industry than Zoe Quinn ever was until this point. And you know what? I mean, I, I didn't know who Zoe Quinn was until this shit started blowing up. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't know who she was, I'd never heard of her game, nothing. Yeah. Which, to be fair, it, it worked at least a little bit for publicity. It's a shitty way to do it, and and and, and it, you know I, I by no means condone this way of getting publicity, but there is a mm-hmm. silver lining, 
at the very least. And and I like to try and find that because it helps me keep keep my faith in humanity a little bit. Uh, so uh, it continues on. How did the sex life of a person I've never heard of kick off a major quote unquote scandal? One of those men was a writer for the prominent gaming site Kotaku, a gawker property. While both he and Quinn denied the allegations that she somehow traded sex for coverage, outraged gamers had already taken to Twitter, Reddit, and 4chan by the tens of thousands to protest the so-called ethical breaches in gaming journalism. Uh, wait, wait, what was the name of that guy with the, the, uh, my short-term memory gave me the bird finger, Gonzo. What was the name of the other guy with the, the, the sellout, the, the national? Oh, Jeff Keighley. Jeff Keighley, thank you. Yeah. And yet, you know, they don't go after Jeff Keighley for this, like you had noted. Well, Almost, no, they don't drop his docs. Nope. They, they don't threaten to rape him or kill him or murder him. Or bomb the, or shoot up the areas that he plans to speak at next because, hey, you're a corporate sellout whore person type person. You take money for good, you know, good reviews, but... <laughs> yeah. Almost two months later, in fact, many people will still try to tell you that ethics and game journalism are all Gamergate's really about. If it was, then these... I'm just going to come out and say it. These misogynistic assholes would not be putting their shit under the Gamergate tag. They would do something else. Or, yeah. better yet, I have a better idea. Considering... It, it's not going to be likely that these misogynistic assholes are going to pull their dick out of the Gamergate tag anytime soon. Everybody who is a part of Gamergate, and I'm not the only one who has said this so far, but if if you are using the Gamergate banner to yeah, and and your and your motives are are true and your motives are good, that you want more of the journalistic integrity coming around, journalistic transparency, then might I suggest just getting a different banner distance yourself from those motherfuckers Somehow. yeah seriously at this point you can't attach yourself to gamergate and actually expect to be taken seriously like i don't care if you actually started this thing up with good intentions at this point it's been hijacked by far too many radicals and far too many trolls that you guys just have to find something else. Find a different hashtag. Something that, ob you know, you're going to have to work at it maybe. But if you legitimately believe in your cause, then you have to leave Gamergate behind as an identity. I was actually, kind of, you know, I was watching an interaction between, like, a Gamergator and uh, Kyle Calgren, Owen Citizen, and Tony mm -hmm. Goldmark on Twitter. And I just responded, you know, to one of them saying, like, I don't understand how anyone can attach themselves to Gamergate at this point. It's like trying to live in a house that's on fire. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't do it. it. It's easy to roast marshmallows, but you can't do it. Ugh. Right, yeah, the one thing that might be good about it is going to be overshadowed by the flaming death that's going to fall on top of you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, oh, so the problem with that argument is that Gamergate's biggest protests, quote-unquote, don't appear to have any relation to ethics or journalism. Not even a tangential one. Instead, anonymous hackers posted Quinn's personal information, including her address and nude pictures, shortly after her ex's blog went up. Consider oh yeah, just throwing a little sex crime in there just to make your cause that much more legitimate. Yeah, because... Yeah. Well, okay, there's the thing about the pictures. <laughs> um, yep. there, there was a time when she did various types of modeling. Yeah. So these aren't, you know, pictures that somebody took at home on their camera. Oh, okay. So it's not Jennifer phone. Lawrence type Right. Type this situation. isn't, this isn't, yeah, I, I took a sexy selfie. This okay, is, right. uh, you know, somebody took professional pictures of me, you know, in my underwear in various states of undress and said, hey, this is where these pictures are located on the internet. I've actually, like, Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. it was actually a site that she had to sign up for and, and give out her personal information to be a part of. And I've actually seen um, a woman who um, had photographed um, Zoe in the past talking about it. Yeah. So the nudes, okay. that, the nudes that they put out there, at, at, least, at least what I'm understanding right now, they're not – you know, hacked from like her phone or something. They are actually out there on sites, and you can go and see them. And she had signed off on them. Basically, okay, well what they I did was my, yeah. I retract my previous statement then. <laughs> yeah. Although I admit I still kind of work, because I wouldn't be surprised if some of them tried to get into her phone and get them out. But I yeah. wouldn't be surprised, because hey, look what's happened before. <laughs> uh, but oh god, but they're they're 
you know, it, it just seems like, oh, yeah, yeah, we, we were delegitimizing her because she took nude photos of herself or, or she had nude photos taken of her. She did nude modeling. She did porn. Oh, my God. When, yeah, just because she did anything close to porn doesn't make her a bad person, doesn't make her a bad developer. Just, yeah. It just doesn't. They're they're trying. Yeah. Basically, Whether or not I think Zoe Quinn is a bad person is really irrelevant to Gamergate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, uh, were you were you gonna say anything else? Yeah. Uh, they're higher. Uh, oh, just uh, that you know I've because and I hate to say this because I don't want it to sound like victim blaming, but you have to recognize that there are some battles that you really just shouldn't fight. Yeah. And I, I've seen her Twitter account post things that have been purposely there to egg people on. Yeah. So, you know, do I do I necessarily side with Zoe Quint? Like, do I think she's a good person? No, I, I probably don't think she's a good person. But do I take her side because I feel like she's getting shit on? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, those, those two things don't have to go hand in hand. I can recognize she's getting a raw deal, even though I recognize that she's not really helping herself out either. Yeah. You know, she was egging her boyfriend on to get in Twitter fights with her ex-boyfriend. It's like, seriously, just stop. Yeah, that's, that, that's just, no. And, yeah. and law enforcement would tell you the same thing. They would say, really, just don't do it. Yeah. And I know that from my own experience with stalking, mm -hmm. they're just like, don't reply, just yeah, keep just track quietly, of it all. Yeah, quietly yeah. gather up your information and keep track of everything that's happening. And yeah, Zoe Quinn has definitely not helped her case in this whole debacle, but that does in no way, yeah, excuses what's been happening to right. her. Right, just like, do, do I think Anita Sarkeesian is particularly good at her job? No. No, I don't. absolutely not. But... You know, do I think that she deserves death threats and rape threats and to be driven out of her home? No, absolutely not. <laughs> you yeah, know, uh, uh, how well she does her job doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, OK, well, well, you know what? We'll even slip it on the other one. You know, some people I know a lot of people are, are getting well, I say a lot of people, but some people are getting less and less kind of enthused with the way, uh, you know, Doug Walker is taking the nostalgia critic. How many death threats is he getting because they're taking the critic because he's taking the critic in directions he they don't like? I haven't heard of any. Have you? No, no. I, I certainly can't say. I mean, certainly not on the level of, you know, people like, you know, Lindsay. Yeah. Who? who yeah. Oh, God. That And that is that is a problem. When it, when it comes to people dealing with women on the internet, challenging different things, no matter what it is. With Anita Sarkeesian's case, it's tropes, you know, tropes versus women in video games. And I'm kind of on, I'm kind of with Holly on this one in that she, yeah, she makes some good points here and there, but at the same time, it's like like with her most recent one about Bayonetta too. You know, talking about Bayonetta being created just for the male gaze or whatever. And meanwhile, we've got the... the... I know plenty of women who would disagree with that, by the way. <laughs> including, <laughs> including the woman who created Bayonetta. Who, who, who is on record as saying, yeah, you know, I created that as kind of a sexual power fantasy for myself. So, uh, yeah, that kind of doesn't hold water. The fact that guys want to draw pictures of her getting fucked seven ways from Sunday is kind of incidental. You know? And, and who knows? It might even work for, for, for the lady who created her whose name is escaping me right now because you know what? That means you know, Bayonetta is an extension of her. Thus, they are fantasizing about an extension of her, which you know, you know that, that's a whole psychological thing. But you know what? As long as it's healthy, it works. You know, and, and it's, making, <laughs> it's making shit tons of money. And one, from what I understand, the original was good enough to have a sequel. So I understand they're good games. Ah. And by the way, as, as has been pointed out, and we've hinted it around over and over and over again, the article does note that the male journalist whose ethics were purportedly at the center of the whole kerfluffle is still writing for Kotaku, which, for the record, ruled that neither he nor Quinn did anything wrong. So when, you know, it's, the information is out there that, excuse me, I should not be burpy on this show. The, the the information is out there that they 
didn't do anything wrong. If anything did happen, it was not in the context of, uh, of, of you know, basically fucking for good reviews. And if they ever did, it was outside of that, whether or not it was, you know, cheating or not cheating or what have you. So yeah. they didn't do anything. So at the end of the day, a lot of these people that are still going after Zoe Quinn for suppo- for this supposed um, uh, breach of journalistic ethics instead of the other – instead of the guy or, you know, and leaving the guy out of it, it just looks more like it's basically extreme slut shaming. It's basically mm. what I'm seeing here because, yeah, that, that's – no. You know? Yeah. I actually have to say that um... – I've been re- I'm reading this uh, this Twitter uh, chain that Todd in the Shadows posted that uh, you linked us to, Gomer, where it's it, he really kind of hits the nail on the head about just everything that's wrong with Gamergate and why, at this point, I if, if you truly want to be taken seriously, you have to disassociate yourself from Gamergate and say, look, here's the facts. Zoe Quinn did all these things wrong, and this is what we need in gaming journalism and have a reasonable discussion about it. But, I mean, here, here's you know what he said. For all Gamergate defenders, I've heard one thing. This isn't about Zoe Quinn anymore. This response falls into two separate camps. The first camp is, but she's a bitch who totally had it coming. Let's ignore those people. The other camp is, what happened to Zoe Quinn was awful, and it's bullshit we're being lumped in with those assholes. This is for them. Ask yourselves, do you honestly believe that the assholes behind the Zoe Quinn hate storm haven't found a nice, comfortable home in Gamergate? Do you believe that the goals of Gamergate are unamenable to the haters and the harassers, or do you think it fits right in with their agenda? Whatever the shift in rhetoric, this movement is accomplishing exactly the same things that initial hate mob wanted. So when you say you don't condone harassment, this is why I do not believe it. Because you're still carrying out their dirty work. That's what Gamergate was designed for, and it's what it's accomplishing. So no, this is still about Zoe Quinn in a very real sense. That's why it was only targeted anyone who has defended Zoe Quinn. That's why it hasn't gone after anyone else. Gamergate rejects harassment and harassers while still supporting all of their goals. So no, that's why I don't support it. And you're right, he does hit the nail right on the head. Yeah, somebody had posted a a comic about this the other day, Mm -hmm. where it's, you know, one guy mugging another guy, and he's like... Yeah, you know, I don't support what he's doing, but, I mean, you should probably do what he's telling you to, because, you know. Yeah. It's like, well, if you don't give me your money, I'm going to shoot you. Well, I I don't support what that guy said at all. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, And and there was one thing that was kind of leaping out at me. Uh, Where was that? Where was that? Um, um, um. Ah, shit. I I lost that particular one. But, oh, well. Uh, it, It might come around later it'll be clicked back into place later or something but yeah yeah and, and of course you know the three of us I'm, I'm pretty sure just by by the by the way we're talking uh, we we're, we are defending zoe quinn in this case in terms of uh yeah you shouldn't um you know you shouldn't send death threats to her you shouldn't threaten to rape her you shouldn't drive her out of her home in fear etc 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 all that is bullshit in that sense yeah i i think i am confident in saying i i think we all would defend her in that i'm confident in saying Right. Yeah. So I would. Yeah, I would. I mean, at this yeah, point, it's not that you shouldn't do that to her. You shouldn't do that to anyone. Fair ever. enough. This this is also true. Yeah. Right. There, there's I don't know how no many... acceptable scenario in which these things are okay. Yeah. I don't even think you could get away with doing that to Hitler. Please don't no. gobble in this argument, Comer. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, but but, but, but that, that is one of those things that that is it is like I I don't I don't even think it would be acceptable for that. But that's a whole another story. Again, yeah. Um, well, let me ask you this: Have either of you ever seen uh, a Fritz Lang's M? I don't even think no. I've heard of it. Uh, it's it, it was a movie made uh, made it was a German movie made in the '30s. It was one of Peter Lorre's first uh, you know big starring roles, and it's about a child murderer who is tracked down and you know located by angry you know a group of angry parents you know who of you know you know, his children have been killed by this man and they track him down, you know, using vigilante justice, street mobs, you know, going above the law. And then they all corner him and, you know, at the end of the movie and they're like basically going to put him through a kangaroo court and then, you know, hang him on the spot. And he, and, you know, he has the scene where he says like, you know, I've got a lot of fucked up things going on in my life. I, you know, I, I have a, 
a sickness in me. I am a, a deeply disturbed person that I, I, and I recognize this. I recognize that I have a serious problem, but you know what? I at least have a fragment of an excuse for it. You, you people don't have an excuse. Yeah, I mean, I've committed, you know, a horrible atrocity, but wh what what you're doing right now, does this literally, does this make you any, really that different from me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I mean, really, look at yourselves in the mirror. How are you any more morally upstanding by going above the law and trying to just hang me on the spot? You got a point there. And, <laughs> and I'm not saying that, you know, again, there's a discussion to be had about, you know, that it's a very, it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's like, yeah, you don't want, you obviously don't want to take the side of a child murderer, but it's like, really, when we abandon our own sense of morality and then just try and go vigilante justice on these people, we honestly, like, kind of need to look at ourselves in the mirror and be like, what, 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 what in, in substance makes me different? Exactly. Yeah, and that's where Todd makes a really incredible point here, where he's just like, you know, what people have started to do, and we actually have a link to this effect, is that they've seen that this is a really good way to spread hate. Yeah. And they're like, whether, you know, whether or not they actually believe in it, this is one of the problems with the internet, is that it provides this great way for people to, um, and there's, I think on Cracked, um, in which I don't have the link to, and I won't give it to you because I know Cracked is just, you'll get stuck there forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there, there's an article on Cracked about um, the way different um, mental conditions present themselves on the internet. And one of them is the way we use anonymity on the internet to spread hate. Yeah. Um, it, it gives us this sense of freedom. I, I say us and, you know, the, the general the sense, general sense as in, you know, people. Um, right. And it allows us to go out there and say these things that we would never say to anyone else. Um, that you would never say in real life that if you knew somebody who said this to somebody else, you would be all over them for it. You'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? What are you doing? Um, but when we think we can get away with it, people do it. Um, and, you know, people are like, oh, but, but those people are messed up. Right. I, and then I'd want to direct you to, again, I don't have the link for this. Um, and I'm, one is, I don't remember where I saw it. It might have been a Dear Prudence type of letter column. And it was basically, and Gomer, you might actually have this link somewhere. It was basically a woman who found out that this was the kind of stuff that her husband did in his free time. Oh, I think, oh, actually, actually, he, there, we do have a was, link for that one. We do have a right, link for that he, he was the nicest, sweetest guy in the world. And he happened to leave his browser open one day, and she comes home to find that this is the kind of shit that he does. Yeah, uh, the one I, the, the link I've got is on the uh, the Mary Sue dot com. Uh, yeah. Discovers husband, father of her unborn child, is a disgusting internet troll. Yeah, yeah and, and this is the kind that. of stuff that he does. That, that he goes out there and he encourages people to kill themselves, and you know he sends them threats and just says all sorts of terrible things to them. And she was like, I, I don't know what to do because I tried to talk to him about it. And he was like, well, it's just a way for me to relieve stress. Yeah. Oh, you see, boo, the problem, fuckity who. Yeah. See, here's the problem. And this is another problem I've had with like, you know, with like internet language in, in general. Every time I hear somebody when they talk about doing something offline or in meat space or whatever, they say real life. It, it does kind of irk me because technically it's all real life. Yeah. You know? I, I also hate that phrase. Yeah. I'm like. I'm just as real, I, and I understand that there are people who are not, yeah. but almost every person I've ever met on the internet is as just as much themselves on the internet, if not more so, than they are in real life. Yeah. I mean, it's like, if you were to come up and meet me, as, like I was, you know, walking around, you know, downtown Graceful or whatever, and you come up and say, hi, I'd be really friendly, I'd probably be a little shy, um... It, it, and depending on how quickly I can get comfortable with you, it could you know, be a friendly conversation, or, or in some cases, well, we know where that can lead. Um, yeah, my ex girlfriend can tell you where, where some of those. Can lead. <laughs> okay, but but <laughs> you get the idea. You get the idea.
point being, it, it, it's it's just kind of a roll of the dice, pretty much. Um, you know, and, and and I would like to think a lot of people are like that. You know, or hell, first time I met Becky face to face, we pretty much caused everybody in in National Harbor to, to suddenly contract diabetes. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but but you know, it, it it all depends. It depends on situation, circumstances, and and again, I, I reiterate, it could be for different people. It, it could be different for different people. I mean. I mean, I, I I've yet to actually meet Gonzo face to face, but I mean, I mean, I would, I would how, you know what? I'm not even going to assume. I'm going to ask. You know, if you were to meet somebody that you've met, you originally knew online face to face, how would how would you end up reacting? Um. Well, quite frankly, if I was ever to meet you guys, I'd probably well at this point, if I was to meet you guys, I'd probably be a lot uh, more open and be like, "Wow, how's how are you guys doing? It's so good to finally see you because I've interacted with you, you know, quite a bit, but." A lot of the people that I like kind of interact with online. I mean, yeah. I mean, I ha- if I if, if I've spent enough time interacting with them, it'd be like very friendly. Like, yeah, how's it going? But I mean, people more like that I just sort of know online. Like, you know, a lot of the producers for you know, like that guy with the glasses or Nerd Vice or all these other sites. I mean, I would probably be really, yeah, you know, pretty kind of intimidated at at first because it's just like I've never actually really interacted with them, or if I have, it's been in a very small manner. I mean, and it. And I would probably be kind of, you know, a little worried at first, but I'm, I'm sure, you know, if, yeah, you know, if, if we found enough common ground, we would probably get along well enough. Or, you know, if not, I'd probably just, you know, say my piece, say, hey, it's, you know, nice to finally meet you, and then move on, so I don't take up too much of their time. Yeah. And then. But. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. I don't really know where else to go with that. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, well, we, we kind of got a little bit off, off, off the beaten path. Well, there. I mean, it basically makes my point that. Mm-hmm. You you sort of put on more of a, a polite face when you're meeting somebody in person, whereas you'll be more relaxed and more likely to be true to yourself online. Yeah, which and, makes... and that's that's what makes these kinds of threats so horrific, because it's like this is what these people are carrying around inside of them. And... Yeah, who you are in the dark says more about you than words ever can. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 and I will admit, at one point, I, I never got, like, this horrible, but I have had my horrible moments in, like, online anonymity. Like, uh, you know, I have went on Omegle one time, and I made somebody think I was going to kill myself. And if that person ever figured out who that was and figure, traces it back to me, I just want to say I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I was <laughs> really horrible. I was in a really horrible place. It does not excuse anything. I was a bastard. I admit it here. Uh you know, and and I admit that you know pretty much for full disclosure and to show you know that that at the least I would like to think that even for these people these degenerates as I, and even as I'm calling them degenerates that just need to take a step back and realize that they're not the center of the fucking universe and the world's going to change and they can stop acting like the old men yelling at clouds, you know, there I like to think there is hope for them, mm-hmm. and because you know and. I'm, I'm I'm living proof of that. I've been in a lot of the same places that they've been, not to the degree that they have been. I've not threatened to rape anybody mm-hmm. or anything. I've I've gotten better, and they can too. It, it's just going to take time, and it's going to have to take hammering the realization and like, hey, you're not the center of the goddamn universe. Just because you think somebody is attacking something that you hold dear and beloved and cherished <laughs> doesn't mean that they have to be killed or raped or what have you. You don't have to kill innocent people just because they disagree with you. Right. Yeah. Well, and, you know, so people have found a very comfortable uh, home, I, I, I hate to say that, um, in this very, very hateful environment. Um, and I think it was just this morning, this article came out about a journalist has been outed as a Twitter harasser sending death threats. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, it was actually a couple days ago. Yeah. So, yeah, I've, I've, I've actually got that up right here. You, you, I think, yeah, you did send it to me right, right about as we started. Uh, mm-hmm. Blogjob.com. And uh, the article headline reads, Gamergate journalist allegedly outed as Twitter harasser sending death threats. 
Uh, the Gamergate movement has been labeled as a lot of nasty things over the course of the past couple of months, but the tide is changing thanks to gamers adapting to the times. Which they should have already. Uh, it's been an amazing ride to see how gamers have had to evolve as vigilante journalists to do the job that the press is supposed to do. What does this mean? It means that one of the people sending harassment threats and abuse over Twitter is potentially w one amongst the journalists who have lambasted Gamergate as a hate and misogynist machine. Citizen journalists and 8chan Gamergaters have been working hard to uncover one of the harassers who have been attacking Anidia Sarkeesian on Twitter. Turns out that it's not someone fighting against harassment and supporting ethics and journalism through Gamergate. It's allegedly someone who's in the business of selling clickbait on a Brazilian blog. So they're basically just using this as an excuse to generate headlines. I'm, why am I I, 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 I am, I am thinking that tomorrow never dies here for some reason, except not on quite that much of a global scale. Still horrific though. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I'm, I'm still kind of like on Facebook right now and like just looking up other stuff re related to this whole issue. And there's one thing in all honesty, that really kind of strikes me as being indicative of the fact of everything that is, at this point, wrong with Gamergate, and why, even if you you think that the, the movement that, you know, was started up by it has legitimate points, which, again, there's an argument to be had there that, you know, there are legitimate points to be made with this whole thing. Here's something that just kind of flabbergasted me when I really found out about it. Mm -hmm. 4chan? wants nothing to do with Gamergate anymore. Yeah, I, I remember when that was going down, too. wants nothing to do with Gamergate. Yeah. Just really think about that for a second. Which is... They had... Pete, Gamergaters had to create their own fucking image board just so that they could do all this shit, because 4chan was like, this, this is way too much for us to handle. We don't want it. Yeah. Don't want it. Yeah, and they... I think they like brought in a new guy, and 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 it's, it's not just Gamergate, but it was like a whole bunch of other things as well that got a lot of the old 4chaners pissed off, and they're like, "Oh, we can't have this or this or this or this this. What the fuck is happening to freedom?" It's like, um, yeah, your your freedom of speech is not it, it does not apply here. It's not the government. You know, it, it's yeah. a private privately owned thing. So they went and made their own privately owned thing, which is now 8chan, because mm -hmm. now 8chan's a thing. Because why they could. Yeah, very original guys. Very. Good. I, I guess uh, twice as much hate. I yeah. guess. I guess, but yeah. double your hatred, double your fun. Double your hatred with hatred mint gum. <laughs> oh. Uh, so yeah, and I, I mentioned earlier that I, I had uh, been very mostly low key on the Gamergate stuff when it comes to social media in terms of like my own commentary or whatever. But I, I do want to bring this up because it, it does illustrate a point from earlier that um, that I've reblogged something um, on on, on uh, Tumblr. It says, "Welcome to the feminist cult. Today we'll talk about terrifying topics such as being nice to yourself and proper sex education." Sounds a little tongue in cheek to me, you know. Try, you know, from the point of view uh, of what uh, you know the people that would support, you know, that that would be against this kind of stuff would would see this as, you know. And then that's how I took it, and I actually, I actually got called out for it, uh, and was told, you know, being nice, which includes ostracizing anyone that doesn't agree with what you say, peer pressure to accept a narrative, um, you know, which I can, I can honestly see that, um, and I bring, I bring that up, like I said, even though that particular reblog was tongue in cheek and and and, and everything. I have a feeling that a lot of these more misogynistic people that are throwing all of this hate out there, all of this vitriol out there, that's what they think. I have that feeling. I mean, am, am I am I wrong? Am I? You know? I don't even know at this point anymore. I mean, this whole issue has gotten so just muddied. I mean, like well, I said, the thing there's... is, it's it's both sides too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's know, not. It... Yeah, that's we, another we've thing. now reached the point where, you know, both Gamergate and Stop Gamergate are just excuses for people to be hateful. Yeah. Right. That's the worst part of this is that it's like, I, I actually, like I said, I was involved in a, you know, in a sort of a mini debate on Facebook about this. And, you know, there are arguments being made that, 
So it's like, well, there's bad people on both sides, and it's like, you know what? That's true. At this point, all Gamergate and Stop Gamergate and the people on both <laughs> sides, you know, the trolls and the social justice warriors, such as, it, as they are, mm-hmm. it's all that's being used at this point. It's just an excuse to levy hate at one people. Like, fuck Gamergate. Fuck social justice warriors. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck everybody. God damn! Yeah. Hey, and it, it makes me sad, and I, I had read a huge thread on Mike Dodd's Facebook the other day mm-hmm. um, that even somebody who I, I really like and respect and is one of my friends, I, I was disappointed with their reactions. Uh, they're very, very much... Um, you know, and Gamergate, and it was like, it was just coming from a place that was so disrespectful, and it, I mean, couldn't reach the point where they couldn't even engage in, uh, you know, polite debate or conversation, and, you know, the what was said about it was, well, I don't have to respect, you know, uh, something about, uh, you know, bad opinions or something like that and it's like no no, you don't have to you know respect death threats and and stuff like that um but if you can't engage in discussion with someone without talking down to them and stuff like that and then you shouldn't be having the conversation yeah anymore exactly and and that that apply applies across the board applies to me and if somebody catches me doing it please slap me you know just just do it you know you know I'll, I'll probably look at you pissed for a moment and then once i realize what the hell was going on then i'll be like all right all right you know i'll cool off and we'll come mm-hmm. back with fresh heads <laughs> that's that's the way you got to do it oh so we're down to the last 10 minutes uh this might be this might take a bit to sum up um <laughs> uh, so gamergate and and by extension anti-gamergate at this point as well which was started as a response to, you know, well, or Stop Gamergate, rather, which was started, you know, recently as a response. And and I admit, I, I, I re- retweeted a few of those as well, the, the Stop Gamergate ones. When I first saw it, yeah, and, you know, but my own contribution to the thing was both sides are losing. Yeah. The, there yeah. really is no winning this fight anymore. Yeah. And, you know, it's getting to the point where... You know, I I may not agree with Gamergate people because, yeah, I don't think this is an effective means to an end. Yeah. I, we're never going to get to the place that they want to get to as long as this kind of hate is associated with it. Yeah, it, it's kind of like, it's making me think, oh, oh I'm, I'm, I'm going to make this comparison. Some people, people are not going to like me for it, but I'm thinking like the difference between the GOP and the Tea Party. Tea Party got so extreme, the GOP is like, no, no, you guys go sit over there in the corner. That That's yeah. what I'm seeing here. It, it's similar to that. Mm-hmm. And Yeah, I, I can see that. I mean, it's it, it, it comes back to sort of what I said earlier about how, at this point, I mean, I don't care how many good points the people, you know, the, the sane people in Gamergate are making at this point because you're attaching yourself to a movement that has become so toxic and corrupted by trolls and people who probably want to do legitimate harm to these people, mm-hmm. that you guys have to find somewhere else to go. You have to find mm-hmm. something like create a hashtag that says "We are not Gamergate," and yeah. make your legitimate points there. Disassociate yourself from that movement because you can't be taken seriously anymore. Yeah, mm-hmm. which also reminds me, there was another one that was popping up along with the Gamergate. I think it was like a "Not Your Shield" hashtag or whatever. That yeah. that people were oh god I I didn't even do much into it because I literally just remembered it uh, wish I'd remembered it before the show but but from what I understand it was it, it was again trying to go from memory here uh, it was it was like people's um, I'm gonna say women you know or or some I'm assuming women um, if either of you have any better information please let me know um, that that was like gamer gates were using. I want to say gamergators using certain women as shields, like, see, we, 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 we like this woman, or we like this, or we do this, or what have you. Kind of like the way that, you know, racists would be like, well, I'm not racist, I have one black best friend. That's what I'm getting. Am I at all accurate, or... I don't really know. I haven't really followed it. Um, uh, it and, says... and yeah, there are plenty of women 
gamer gators and and disabled gamer gators and you know minority gamer other minority gamer gators and um you yeah, know. I mean, like, HN was started by a, a guy who's who, who the community's nicknamed Hot Wheels because he's, like, you know, he's in a wheelchair because he has a spinal condition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever. I mean, that that's... that. I, I, I feel bad for you that you have that condition. Don't feel bad at all that, you know, you started up a website to, you know, keep propagating your fucking hate. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, your condition does not excuse you. In yeah, the... your condition, your race, your sexual orientation, your gender doesn't fucking matter when it comes to spewing hate. And seriously, everybody who is a stop gamer gator and gamer gate whatever don't like don't sink to that same level. Don't walk around and make comments about the disabled or about gays and lesbians or whatever. Whatever it is that you're thinking in your head that is this hateful bullshit that you're going to spew just don't do it. Yeah, just, just, yeah. you know. Because we, we've now reached the point where gamer gators are getting death threats. Yeah, and, and that's not cool either. And, and it, you know it's, what? this has become a very comfortable position for people to sit and hate from on both sides, and that's why, as much as I want gamer gate to stop, I'd, I'd rather just put up my hands and walk away and be like, I, I really don't want any part of this. Yeah. Yeah, at this point, like, I'm I'm prepared to never speak about this issue again. I unless actually... somebody actually dies. Unless unless some unless there is like an actual like somebody makes good on one of these threats and then somebody comes to legitimate harm and at that point then I mean and I hate to even hypothesize it getting to that point. I hate to fucking you know, envision that we live in a world where that could actually happen. Mm-hmm. But I just don't know what more there is to even say because like, yeah, I, I don't support you know the, you know what Gamergate is devolved into. But then watching this whole stop Gamergate thing, it's just like fuck people. Come on, one of us needs to be the better person. Yeah. yeah, and unfortunately, the better people are not getting involved. We're standing on the sidelines saying, "Shut the fuck up." Yeah. Let's just play video games, people. Come on. Yeah. You know what I'm gonna do after this show? Here's what I'm gonna do after this show. After we get finished recording and we get we get everything up, I am going to well well, you know while it's rendering and everything, I'm gonna take care of some other little business I've got going on around it around here. And once the show is uploaded, before I watch my week daily dose of General Hospital for the Port Charlie podcast, I'm gonna take my 3DS. I'm gonna play the fuck out of Super Smash Brothers. That's what I'm gonna do. And after this show goes up, if anybody wants to try and drag me into Gamergate bullshit after all of this, I'm going to play for them this little clip from George Carlin's final show that I uploaded to my YouTube channel this past week that is simply him screaming, SHUT THE FUCK UP! Yeah. Because, seriously, it is getting... It has gotten to that point. We brought it on this show because, you know what, it, it's something that needs to go out there, something that needs to be discussed... And, you know, we've, we've had an hour. We've had our hour to discuss it. And like Gonzo said, unless something, unless somebody actually dies or something even more hor- horrific happens, I'm, I am personally done, don't want to bring it up again. You know, at least not on this show. And probably not on Thespian Talk either. So... Yeah, I, I mean, if, if, if somebody's getting doxxed and, you know, and receiving death threats, I mean, then, yeah, they should, you know, take whatever net mess... Net, measures are necessary to ensure that they're protected. Mm-hmm. And, and to that know, end, we will have the links on how to remove yourself from yes, these yes. different sites at the end. Absolutely. Yeah. But at, the, at this point, like, I, I just, I think the, uh, it, it is like the only way that this, that the, all this can, can just die down, go away, and we can return to some semblance of normal is to just stop talking about it and I, I know that we just spent an hour talking about it but really it's like these are things that do need to be talked about we need to say here's why these people are full of shit here's why these people are full of shit here's why both sides can go fuck themselves now let's just play some fucking video games damn straight and right and this is, this is like any other argument that you may have in your personal life you know sometimes you really want to talk about a situation And you don't realize that maybe the best thing to do is to walk away and cool off first before you can engage in productive discussion. Yeah. Notice how we've we've 
put this show out. Oh wait, how long has it been? What six weeks since Gamergate started? <laughs> That's not exactly yeah. an accident here. <laughs> that plus oh. we thought it was just gonna die down, and yeah, it's like yeah. Uh so, so yeah. Uh, in short, it, you know, you know, to try to try and, and make sure it is fully summarized. Um, yeah, Gamergate, stop Gamergate. Go back to your corners. Shut the fuck up. If you are a part of gamer, if you're a part of either of them, and you have more noble or altruistic mo- motives, such as you know having discussions about ethics, you know journalistic ethics, and 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 everything with with gaming journalism and everything. If you're actually wanting to have discussions about that, take it to another hashtag, because the one you're using, you know, like we've said before, you know. You're not going to be taken seriously. You're going to be looked at. You're going to be painted with the same brush as everybody else. Is it right? No, it's not right. But that's the way it is. And if you if you want you know if you want to actually have a conversation, you'll need you know just like the GOP did with the Tea Party. Just push the gamer gate over there. Push the stop gamer gate over there. Have the discussion without either of those labels. You can do that. Yeah. Because seriously, I don't. Yeah, I know you're the people in the stop gamer gate. You know movement are trying to think that they're more morally upstanding, all that stuff. You're still helping give gamers a bad name at this point. Yeah, and considering all three of us are, are, are gamers, in a way, yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That does not sit well here. No, I'm just so disappointed that, you know, in the the 15 or so years since, you know, we we first had these, these discussions about, you know, how, you know... Are, are gamers good people? Because apparently the people who shot up Columbine like to play Doom. It's just like, we're still... This this whole issue has essentially brought us back to that point, And we're back in the fucking 90s again. Yeah, and it's just... I did not not want to go there. We left the 90s behind. Let's keep it that way, okay? Except for the yeah. possibility of style. That I'll excuse. <laughs> I'll excuse style because it's interesting. But everything well, else, the mentality, you know, the negative, the negative stuff we can leave behind. We'll leave the negatives. Yeah. The positives are okay. If you know anybody who is sending threats on either side, do us all a favor. Just turn them over to the police. Don't out them on the internet because guess what? You're not going to do anybody any favors. It's only going to perpetuate more hate. Yeah. I, Just turn them over to the police. Yeah. I would say the only reason you would need to out them on the internet is if after you've turned them over to the police and the police are ineffective and, and they nothing is done. That's when you out yeah. them. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, anyways, as we stated, all of the links, even the links that we ended up not using for the show are going to be in the description um, they're going to be on the they're going to be on the na- main one on my site rtgomer.com. Also going to be on the nerdvice section. I don't I don't think they'll be on the iTunes version because that's just going to be taking up way too much space. So uh, the links are on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com, um, along with the links that Holly is going to provide to you know get your name off the inter- you know your addresses and stuff off the internet where you don't want them. Um, you know I, th- I those will probably be near the top. Um, and with all of that, um, <laughs> and, and if anybody wants to send threats to me, they can send them to rtgomerprod at gmail.com. I'm a big boy. I can take it. And that means you guys are listening. So, yeah, bring it on. Uh, so, uh, anyway, um, <laughs> with that said, the most, awkward, the most awkward way to transition into the outro ever, uh, if people wanted to find you on social media, Gonzo, where could they find you if you wanted them to find you? Um, <laughs> you mean where do you want to send your threats? <laughs> right. I'm like, if um, you want to send me threats, um, if you want to send contact me threats, your local police department. That works. And yeah, let seriously. them know. There you go. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Send them to uh, gomer at rtgomer.com. No. Um, <laughs> um, no if, if you wanted to find me on social media, you can find me on YouTube, on Twitter, on Tumblr, on Instagram, all at Gonzo Link. I'm also part of the Gotham High audio drama. I play Bruce Wayne. I'm the narrator for Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood's abridged series, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Well, Team Brotherhood's abridged series, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood abridged, rather. And I also have my own podcast, Focus on the Frames. It's a podcast about movies that I host with Zenith Will Rule. And you can find that on either focusontheframespodcast.tumblr.com or on Zenith's channel, Zenith Will Review. Sweet. And Holly? 
You can find me all over the internet as Gooky Gox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. So that's Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, uh, all of that. You can find my Facebook fan page at Holly Christine Brown, and you can find me over at Nerdvice. Yes, and me, you can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblers at gomer to one double X. This show in particular also has its own com- Tumblr, which I believe it is condeconrtg.tumblr.com. I think I'm, I'm going by memory. It's going to also be linked below in the uh, video formats on, on uh, rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com, which is where you can find more of my stuff if you want to check all of that out. Uh, the show is also on iTunes, as are my other two podcasts, Destiny and Talk and the Port Charlie Podcast. Um, and if you like the shows that I do and you want to help you know, support the shows more directly, you know, just toss money at me for better equipment or, or just eventually get to a point where your money helps me put food on the table, then head over to patreon.com slash gomer to one double X. Uh, for as little as $1 per production, you get, uh, you know, a behind the scenes vlog once a month. Uh, it's basically rambling, me rambling at you for about 10 minutes or so with updates and everything that I don't necessarily put out to the main public, which, hey, you know, hey, that's not too bad. Uh, you also get early access to all the shows that I do, th- these shows, uh, videos, Let's Plays, etc. You'll get all that early. And you'll also get credit um, when, wherever I can put them on various productions, as well as a special page on the site where I credit everyone who has uh, pledged money to me through Patreon. Uh, again, that's patreon.com slash gomer one double x And if you are watching the video version or I think the... Uh, Artwork does show up on the iTunes version as well. If you're like listening on an iPod or whatever, uh, you want to and you want to know about this artwork. The artwork is done by the beautiful and talented Becky Hopkins, and she has her own Patreon page over at Patreon.com/slash Becky Hop, which also has links to her DeviantArt page, her own and her own uh, web space as well. Uh, you throw some money at her, she'll throw some art at you. And if you throw enough money at her, she will do a 30-second animation. By the way, she's an award-winning animator. Just thought I would throw that out there. Uh, enough money will get you some of that award-winning animation. That is great. Uh, Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. And that is going to be it for this week. We went a little long, but I think we, you know, it, 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 it was a topic that needed it. That was, that was for sure. And then I'm going to get to the editing, and it's going to be like, oh, it's only five minutes longer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, again, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time, which hopefully will not take a few weeks to get out. <laughs> <laughs> Damn scheduling. Oh. But this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine and Gonzo Link signing off. Bye. See ya. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.